Got another question on the NMR topic for you to try. So we're up to number 11. There it is there. If you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate the um, empirical formula from the percentage composition by mass. You'll notice we haven't got the oxygen. So to get the percentage oxygen, we just take these away from 100. So once we've got the empirical formula, we're going to compare the mass of that to the MR of the molecule, which is given by that molecular ion peak M over Z value, and that will tell us if we need to multiply out. So I've got all that there. So the percentage oxygen came out at 19.48%. So we put the percentages in the table for carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, divide by the relative atomic masses. That gives us the moles. Remember, these need to be quoted to three significant figures. Divide by the smallest, which is obviously that one, you get the 5 to 6 to 1 ratio. So the empirical formula is C5H6O. The MR of that is 82. Remember that uh, molecular ion peak had an M over Z of 164. So obviously that's double that. So we double all the um, atoms out and we get C10H12O2. We're told in the carbon-13 NMR spectrum we have seven signals. Well, I'll come on to that at the end once we've got the structure out. I think that's probably the best time to, to do that. Okay, so the main focus is around the proton NMR spectrum. So, like I always do, I'll take each signal in turn and we'll talk about the splitting pattern, we'll talk about the peak area, and we'll talk about the shift. And then if we can, we'll draw up that little part of the molecule and just build it up as we go. So if we start with this signal here, you can see it's got an area of five, so there are five hydrogens in the environment. It's got a shift value between seven and eight, so what's that, 7.3? So we've got two options really. We've got the aromatic hydrogen, so that's a hydrogen directly bonded to a benzene ring, or an OH hydrogen. Well, straight away we rule out the OH because there's five of them, and we've got a multiplet, and you don't get multiplets with OH signals, they're always singlets. And the, the other thing to add here is we don't need to analyze, well certainly OCR um, doesn't require you to analyze the splitting pattern of an aromatic signal. So we'll just write that up now. So there it all is written up, just very briefly, you don't have to write massive amount here. So area five, there's five hydrogens in the environment. The shift value, indicates aromatic hydrogens. Remember we said it can't be OHs because there's five of them. Obviously there's only one H and an OH, and we've got a multiplet, um, whereas OH is a singlet. So, and that reminder there, you don't need to analyze aromatic splitting. So what have we got? We've obviously got a benzene ring with five hydrogens on, so there must only be one thing attached or substituted onto the benzene ring. So we'll move on to this signal now, and we've got this expansion here, so to help us see things more clearly. So this one's at 2.7 ppm. It's a heptet, because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, signals uh, in the multiplet. So what does that mean? There must be six hydrogens adjacent to the hydrogen causing this signal. So that's going to mean two equivalent CH3 groups. The area of one means there's one hydrogen in the environment that causes this signal, and the shift value indicates an H to C to C double bond O. So if we think about what this is going to look like, we've got a single hydrogen bonded to a carbon, bonded to a C double bond O, and off this carbon, we've got these two equivalent methyl groups. So that must be the structural feature from the heptet. So moving on to the final signal now. So we've got this doublet at 1.1 ppm, roughly. Um, so the fact that it's a doublet means there must be an adjacent single hydrogen. The area of six means there are six hydrogens in the environment, so two equivalent methyl groups. And the shift value is H to C to R. So basically, it's the flip side of what we said about the heptet. So we're now talking about these protons here. So if you think about their environment, they are in H to C to R. There's six of them, 
So obviously that's going to give us the area of six and they're adjacent to this single hydrogen. So they're obviously going to be split into a doublet. So that's it for the peak. So if we just put together, summarize what we've found out so far. So these are giving us 10 carbons, 12 hydrogens and a single oxygen. So all we're missing is an oxygen. So the structure looks like this. So what we need to do now is just go back to that carbon-13 NMR information. Remember it said there were seven signals in the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. So let's have a look at the carbon environments in this molecule, this ester. So we've got their equivalent, so one, two, three, four, five, their equivalent, six, their equivalent, seven.